Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Stealth Hitches Trailer Hitch Receiver here on a 2022 BMW X7. So for starters, this hitch is available in two different options. We have the rack receiver version, which comes with a trailer hitch and our two inch opening here. This is gonna be designed for hitch mounted accessories such as bike racks and cargo carriers. You cannot tow with this. But if you do need to tow, there is an option for this. It's gonna come with the additional towing kit. Our towing kit is gonna allow us to tow a trailer. It's gonna provide us with our ball mount and our two inch hitch ball. It's gonna provide us with a seven-way wiring harness as well as a four-way adapter so we can tow those trailers and make sure the lights work. And also with our towing kit, we're gonna get that rack receiver as well. So there's two different options, the rack receiver, which just comes with this, or the towing kit, which comes with both of these. So speaking of our trailer hitch, it's actually completely hidden behind the bumper here. So we're gonna get a 100% factory-like finish when we're not towing. This is what it's gonna look like, just like it was when we didn't have the hitch installed, which is great. It actually replaces the factory bumper beam, which is how it allows the hitch to be tucked back up in there. So when you are ready to tow or haul your bike rack, we'll just take either of our receivers here, go ahead and remove this rubber plug at the bottom. Make sure your locking knob is in the unlocked position line up the hole there and you're just going to put pressure straight up so you hear it click and now it's locked into place and we're ready to go ahead and attach our bike rack or our cargo carrier or if we had the ball mount we could go ahead and couple our trailer it's that easy and when we're ready to be done all we need to do is come up here turn this handle which is tucked up beside the bumper here it is kind of hard to see and then our accessories should just fall out so something else that's great is that while we have our accessory in there there's a lock on the other side. It's kind of tucked back up in there so it's hard to see. So we can actually lock that accessory to the vehicle here so we don't have to worry about anyone coming up and stealing it. So if you're looking for the best top of the line trailer hitch option for your X7 here, this is definitely gonna be the one you're gonna to wanna to choose. That hidden design is really a major deciding factor for a lot of people with these X7s because they look really nice and we don't want something bulky sticking down behind the bumper there taking away from the overall look of our vehicle. So having the ability to remove those accessories is really a game changer. Now getting into some details here, in regards to the towing specs here of the trailer hitch, which is actually tested separately of the vehicle, therefore if the vehicle is rated lower, that's the one you'll need to abide by, but while we're towing using the included ball mount and hitch ball, our capacity is going to be 8,000 pounds for the gross trailer weight and 800 pounds for the tongue weight. Now when we're using the rack receiver here, it's gonna have a 600 pound tongue weight rating. So a slight reduction there, but 600 pounds is more than enough for your bikes or cargo carrier, whatever you wanna throw on there. So if you're wondering where your safety chain loops are when you're towing, these are tucked back under here as well. And you can see they're just gonna be on the bottom of that little rack receiver there. Very accessible. And we have plenty of room there for that smaller S hook and even actually the larger clevis hook as well. So if you have a model with a built-in hands-free lift gate, luckily with the trailer hitch installed, that's still gonna be fully functional and operational. So you don't have to worry about any loss of features here with this trailer hitch. So on the driver's side of our latching mechanism, if you look up here, you're gonna see a seven-way trailer connector. So if you did opt for the one with the uh, towing kit, it's gonna come with the seven-way here as well as a four-way adapter. So you're gonna be able to tow any trailer with a seven-way or a four-way, which is gonna cover the vast majority of trailers on the market. Now this kit also comes with a nice wiring harness there. It's a powered wiring harness, so you don't have to worry about pulling lights for the trailer from the vehicle. And everything is gonna have circuit protection there, so you don't have to worry about any issues with the trailer affecting your lights on the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this one really isn't that bad. You do have to take off the rear bumper cover, and I know that may scare some of you guys, but it's really not at all that bad on the X7 here. It's definitely still achievable for a weekend warrior. Just give yourselves around three to four hours, depending on your experience level and depending on whether you opted for that towing kit or not. But the only thing you will need you might not have, that's a torque wrench. You can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. Let's go ahead and jump into the installation now. So the first step of our installation today, we need to open up the hatch in our vehicle. We're gonna come in here to either side to remove our cargo storage panels. So here's what the one over on the driver's side looks like. They're very easy to remove. We just simply pull down on that there and then we should be able to pry it out. And again, there's one on each side. We need to remove them both. So behind that cargo panel over here on the passenger side, you're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut tucked back in there that's holding our tail light to the body of the vehicle. So just go ahead and take a long extension with a deep well socket, we'll go ahead and get that out. I'm gonna try my hardest not to lose that nut back behind there. 
So once I get it off, I'm gonna to try to grab it by hand. Now we have this same net over here on the driver's side, but this one is a little bit harder to see. It's tucked back there behind some wiring harnesses and other electrical components. So it's gonna be the same removal process for either side, but this one is just a little bit harder to see. So now inside this little area here between the body line and we have the weather stripping here for the hatch, if we come down a little bit, we're going to have these little plastic trim panels here. If you take a tool, a little plastic trim panel removal tool, you sneak it behind this plastic here, you should be able to pry out to remove this cover. So we need to do this on both sides. Here you can see the little fasteners, they just push straight in, so we just pull straight out. We need to remove them on either side. So once we have those covers off, we're ready to remove our tail lights. So in order to do that, there's going to be two different kinds of fasteners. You have two torque screws up here, you remove those using a T30 bit, and then we have a screw down here, or you remove using an 8 millimeter bit. So you want to make sure that you hold on to your tail light while you're removing these. And it looks like I'm going to have to switch tools here to get this bottom one because this weather stripping is in my way. So now once we get the tail light out, there is a little uh, clip here on the bottom. So you're going to pull out that red locking tab, then you're going to depress that, and then you can remove it. So we'll go ahead and give you a better view of that now. So here's that red locking tab. You just simply pull that out and away from the tab and there's a tab you depress there to release the clip and allow you to pull it out. But we've got this side out, just go ahead and do that same thing over on the other side. Now we'll be coming down to our rear bumper here. We're gonna be removing a couple clips located behind this section of our, our trim panel here. So we don't need to remove it completely. We're just gonna remove this first couple clips or so. We're gonna take a plastic trim panel tool. I'm gonna to pry out. And while I do that, I'm simultaneously going to pull out as well. So some of these clips can be difficult to remove, which is why I'm using this trim panel here, but just take your time. We should be able to get them all out without breaking any. So here's what our clips look like there, and basically we just need to depress that tab there to pull it out. So we've got this bottom one here, there's going to be another one in this area here. So I was having a little hard time here with some of the other trim panel tools I was using. So I switched over to this one here, which has more of a finer tip, and I was able to get that in there and press that clip down. So once I get those clips released, if we want to count them here, there's one, two, three that we went ahead and pulled out. Once I do that, I'm going to take a wadded up uh, piece of paper towel, and I'm just going to shove it back there. And this is just going to allow our trim piece here to sit out a little bit from the bumper so we're not scratching it, getting it on and off the vehicle. But the whole reason we need to do that is there's two little screws behind here that we need to remove with an 8 millimeter socket. So now that we have this side complete, we'll go ahead and just jump over to the other side and repeat those same few steps. So next thing we need to do is we're going to come to our center of our bumper here and we're going to be removing these reflectors. So in order to do that, we're going to be taking a trim panel tool there. I'm going to be sneaking it back behind this area here and I'm just going to be prying out. You need to be careful with this because these things are pretty easy to break so just take your time here. Just go ahead and release the clips like so. You can see no broken tabs. So behind that reflector we're going to have a screw tucked in there. We'll remove with an 8 millimeter socket. We need to do this on both sides. So now underneath the vehicle here we're going to have several screws we need to remove. I believe there's around 20 of them so we need to go ahead and take some time to remove each of these. They're going to be along the outside edges here. We'll remove those using a 10 millimeter socket. So again, there's several of these, so just go ahead and take some time. Make sure you get them all. So once we get all those screws off the underside, these panels are kind of falling out on me, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove them now. They're just held in place with some clips. So now we're going to come to either side of our bumper here and we're going to begin pulling out on the side here to release the clips. 
So they're pretty easy along the sides here, but once we get up to the center, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult, but for right now, just go ahead, jump over to the other side, do that same thing, release these clips here on the sides so we can pull it out and away. So a quick little tip here in order to prevent scratches, I recommend taking some painter's tape and either applying it to both of the edges here where our two painted pieces meet, or if you're just gonna do one, I would do it here to the body. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. It's also a good idea to make sure that your vehicle is washed or isn't any dirt on there because we do have to touch the bumper and touching it with the dirt on there could create scratches. So we're just gonna go ahead, take some extra measures of precaution here to ensure we don't damage the finish. So now that we've got the outside clips removed here, there's gonna be a couple in the center here that we need to remove. So you're gonna take the bottom portion of your tailgate, put it up about halfway, kind of like an angle like we have it, and then we're gonna take an Allen key here, and we're gonna use this to pop out some of the clips here. So if we look in here, these are the clips we're actually looking for. They're kind of hard to see, but there's those little tabs right there. We're just gonna use this Allen key to press those down, and they should give away as soon as you put some pressure on them there. You can see there, we've released those. So now we're gonna get an extra set of hands, go ahead and tear this bumper off the vehicle, find a safe place that we can set it aside so it doesn't get damaged. So having done this before, I know that there's gonna be an increased point of contact between the plastic fascia and our metal tailgate at this point here. So what I recommend doing is, I recommend just putting some tape, some painter's tape here on the inside just to protect that painted surface there. That way we don't get any scratches. So it looks like we do have an electrical plug over here on the passenger side that we need to remove. So that's what this one here looks like. And there's gonna be a tab on either side that you press. You can see there's one there, one there, and we can just pull it straight off. So under our tailgate here on either side, we're gonna have these little plastic covers we need to remove. First step of that is using a 10 millimeter socket, removing that nut up there. And then once we get that off, we're gonna have two little rivets here, so one here, one here, push pins, whatever you want to call them. We're going to take a flathead screwdriver, pry open the center section on that, and then the rest of it should follow. The other one's tucked back there a little bit further. It's definitely a lot harder to see. So once we have that out, we should be able to wiggle this panel out. And as we said, there's going to be one on either side. So next, we're going to be lowering our exhaust. So on either side, you're going to have a nut tacked tucked back up in here that's securing your bracket to the bumper beam flange. So we're gonna take a 13 millimeter socket, go ahead and remove that on either side. Next, over here on the passenger side, on the bottom of our reinforcement beam, we have a little wire guide clip. Go ahead and remove that just like so. Next, we're gonna be removing this panel here. This is your kick sensor. So this is held in place with some of these push pin fasteners. So we need to go ahead and remove those. So just like that. Now keep in mind, we're gonna be saving three of these for reinstallation, the others can be discarded. Once you get that last one out, make sure you go ahead and hold on to this because it will fall. But we do have one electrical connector that we need to unplug to remove this completely. So it's just gonna be that little button there. We'll go ahead and set this aside. Now we're ready to remove our reinforcement beam here. So this is gonna be holding the place with four nuts on either side. We're gonna need an 18 millimeter deep well socket and a six inch extension to remove all these. The nuts we'll be keeping and reusing, the actual reinforcement beam will be discarding because our trailer hitch will actually replace that. Now that we have all of our nuts removed, we should just be able to remove this from the vehicle by pulling straight out. On the passenger side, you do kind of have that wiring harness that you need to work around. And behind the reinforcement beam, we have a spacer beam as well. That's just gonna pull right off. We'll be removing and discarding that as well. So now we'll go ahead and take our trailer hitch and set it onto the factory studs. It is kind of tricky over there on the passenger side because you have that wiring harness. And once we get it on here, I'm gonna use the factory nuts there and just place two on the top on either side for now. So now the reason we didn't put the two nuts on the bottom yet is because we have to install our exhaust hanger bracket like so. So once we get that in place, let's go ahead and start threading on those nuts and there's one of these for each side. 
Now pay attention to the way that this bracket is coming down there. You don't want it to come out the top. So basically just make sure it's not flipped and it's in this orientation. So now that we have all of our hardware loosely in place, we'll come back with our 18 millimeter socket and snug it down. With everything snug, we'll come back with our torque wrench here and torque it down to specifications, listen to your instructions. Next thing we're going to do on either side is secure our exhaust hanger bracket to the bracket that we installed on the hitch. So one of these holes is going to line up with that tab there. The other one you're going to place the hex fastener that comes in your kit through and it'll secure to the bottom like so. And once we get that on there, we'll go ahead and tighten it down with a half inch socket. Next, we need to install our latching block. Looks like this. Make sure the handle is on the passenger side, the lock core is on the driver's side. So the installation of this is gonna vary depending on if you have the rack receiver or the towing kit. The rack receiver is just that two inch hitch that we use for bike racks and cargo carriers. The towing kit is gonna come with a ball mount. If you're towing, you need to make sure that you use these little safety chain plates. So you just go ahead and slide those over the knob there, just like so. And then make sure you use the two bolts for the towing. The rack receiver is pretty much just gonna be the same for the exception of this plate here. And we'll use the bolts for the rack receiver that come with that. So just line everything up here as best we can. Our bolts are gonna install from the passenger side to the driver's side. Just keep that in mind. And it is kind of difficult to line everything up, so just be patient with it. So on the other side, pretty much it's gonna be the same thing. Make sure that hole for your safety chains is pointing towards the front of the vehicle. Just slip that over. And then again, for the towing kit, we have an electrical connector bracket that's gonna install just like that. And then we'll go ahead and thread on our nuts. So if you just had the rack receiver one, you don't have to worry about these outside brackets or the electrical connector bracket. That's only gonna be for models with the towing kit. Go ahead and get these started, and then we'll snug them down. So once we have our nuts on there, I'm gonna take a 15 16 inch socket and wrench. We'll go ahead and snug them up. And once we get them snug, we'll come back with our torque wrench and torque everything down to the specifications in your instructions. Next, we can go ahead and reinstall our little sensor panel here. So again, we need to keep three of these from earlier to reinstall this. The rest of them can be discarded. Just go ahead and line everything back up, press those into place, and then make sure you go ahead and plug in your electrical connector over here on the passenger side as well. Then now we'll throw back on these little panels here that go above the flanges for our bumper support, which is now our trailer hitch. So keep in mind, these push pin fasteners that went down, we won't be able to reuse, but we can still re-secure it using that nut at the top and the back. So next we'll go ahead and install these little cover panels here that covered up the uh, bumper beam flange there, which is now our trailer hitch. So just go ahead and use the fasteners that we removed it in the reverse order. We have the two push pins and then the nut on top. And we need to do this on both sides. So now that we got the trailer hitch wrapped up, we're gonna go ahead and move on to our wiring. So now our wiring is actually pretty straightforward here. We do need to remove a couple panels on the vehicle. There's gonna be a threshold panel here. There's gonna be a couple torque screws on there as well as a couple on top. So go ahead and get that out. And then you'll also remove your floor covering just to give you a little bit more room to work. Now, once we get inside here, we should see a couple things. Number one, our battery. We're gonna to need to tie into that. And number two, we have our converter box for our unit. So there's gonna be an input and an output side of this converter box. This is the input side. This is the output side. The output side, we're going to run that bundle of wires over here to the passenger side. So there's actually going to be a large grommet that's just sort of directly above our trailer hitch where we're going to be drilling through. So in your instruction, there's a nice template for that. It is a very thick rubber grommet. You're going to drill a 3 8 inch hole through there. Now, I do want to emphasize extreme caution here because there's actually a wiring harness behind that grommet. So I actually recommend just go ahead and pulling that grommet off so you can check behind there to drill your hole through there. That way you're not puncturing any of the wires. But go ahead and take some time there so you can drill that hole and then we'll start feeding our wires out.
So here's what that wiring harness looks like. For now, we're just gonna leave it dangling down here. We'll show you how we route it over to where the trailer connector is a little bit later, but let's finish up our installation inside the vehicle. So our input side is pretty simple. You're gonna get sort of a bluish black wire and that white wire, we're gonna route this down and under this little air distribution channel here. So one of them is gonna go to the ground and the other is gonna go to the positive battery terminal. Now what I did for the ground, take a 10 millimeter socket, loosen that nut, and then use the sort of fork. I don't, it's quite hard to describe there. It's basically a ring terminal with the center section removed. So kind of two little forks on either side. Crimp that connector onto your white wire, loosen this nut here, slide it on there, and then zip it back down. You can see it's nice and secure. Now for your positive terminal connection, you're gonna to need to crimp on the fuse holder here. And the other end is just gonna to attach to the stud on the positive battery post there. You'll use a 10 millimeter socket to get that nut off, put your ring terminal on, and then re-secure the nut. But that's pretty much it for your power and ground connections. Now for all of our inputs here, you're gonna have four of them, a green wire, a brown wire, a red wire, and the yellow wire. So the red wire is not gonna be used, so we can just go ahead and coil that up and just sort of shove it down there like we did. Now the yellow wire and the brown wire, we're gonna route down through here over to the driver's side. So our two wire connections are actually gonna be back behind this panel. It's extremely hard to see them, uh, but basically you should just be able to look up there and see where the wires for the taillight connector are coming up because they're gonna be pretty much the only ones that are at the top here. So what we're looking for is we're gonna be looking for a green and a blue wire. That's our stop and turn signal circuit. We need to hook that up to the yellow wire. And then we're gonna be looking for a gray and a purple wire. That's gonna be for the running light circuit. We need to hook that up to a brown wire. So the connectors that we're gonna be using to attach those wires are gonna be these exact ones found here. And basically what we're gonna do is there's gonna be two little channels. One channel, you're gonna loop around the factory wire there. The other channel there, you're going to bring your wire that you attached here coming from the converter box. So you just stick them both in on that side. Then you close this like so, and you'll take a pair of pliers here close that down and that's gonna lock everything in place. So we need to do that two times on two of those factory wires over here on the driver's side. So now we're gonna have the green wire coming from the input of our converter box. We're just gonna route that down and over here to the passenger side. And we're gonna hook that up to the green and blue wire here behind this panel using the same steps that we just showed you over on the other side. So now we're gonna take our wires that we routed outside the vehicle through that grommet earlier. We're just gonna trace them to the top of the hitch here, zip tying it along the way. And right here is where we're gonna have our trailer connector mounted. So we already mounted this bracket previously. There's another one we have to install on here. It's sort of like this angled looking bracket. So you're gonna go ahead and attach that using the provided hardware. Then you can attach the trailer connector to this. Then you're gonna feed your wires through this end of the trailer connector. You're gonna remove these two Phillips head screws on either side. And then once you open up the lid, that's gonna allow you to drop out that little terminal block in there. And you just simply attach your wires to that using a Phillips head screw. There's a screw that sort of open up the clamps and just strip your wire, stick it in the correct one and tighten it back down. Now, one thing I do wanna point out is there are some color charts on the actual fuse terminal or that block there. So don't use those, make sure you follow the instructions for the correct orientation of those wires. But aside from that, it's pretty straightforward, not too bad at all. So now that we have the wiring on, the only thing left is to throw the bumper back on and reinstall all those panels that were removed previously. So you can see here, we got our bumper back on. And again, we just followed the reverse order of the steps that we used to remove it. So it was pretty easy to do, no hiccups whatsoever. So now really the only thing left to do is we do need to trim this little bottom gravel guard. This came out of the center section, if you remember. And the good thing about this is we already have some cut lines here from the manufacturer. You can follow this all the way here. But when you get to this part, we need to actually make our own cut line because it has to be larger than what they allow for. So you can see I just kind of came around that little opening there. They tell you to measure down one and three quarter inches from the cut line here, come all the way over. So we're gonna go ahead and take a Dremel tool, just go ahead and remove that material. If you guys have a set of tin snips or some heavy duty shears, you can use that as well. So you just saw us trim this center section here. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall this on the vehicle as well as our two side panels. So now that we have those underbody panels on, that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Stealth Hitches trailer hitch receiver here on a 2022 BMW X7.